happy, healthy, and full of God's glory. That's what God wants you to be. Welcome to the Apostolic, Prophetic, and Teaching Ministry of Triumph in Christ, a ministry to the body of Christ. Every week, we seek the Lord for the timely revelation in the Word to be released to you. Now, how to walk in supernatural health? That's the topic for today. We are still in the season of teaching you on the supernatural realm. So it's not just supernatural provision, but also supernatural health and supernatural strength. And of course, at the end of this message, I'm going to pray for healing for those who need it. Now, the fact is this. In this end time, pestilences and diseases abound. But how do you survive and overcome all these health hazards in this world? Now, before we go on, let's go to Luke 21 verse 11 in the words of Jesus. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. See the word pestilences here? And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But of course, this ministry has always been saying consistently to you, fear not, do not be afraid, because when Jesus is with you, you will always have a place of refuge in him, whatever happens in the world. Now, the word pestilences here in Greek is loimos, and it can mean any of this, diseases, pest, plagues, infirmities. But fear not, beloved of God, because the Lord says you are meant to live in the supernatural health in the Lord, in the spiritual realm, in the physical realm. Amen? Now, is it God's plan for you to live in supernatural health? Yes. To start off with, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. That's one chapter in 3 John anyway. So 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in what? Be in health, just as your soul prospers. So is walking in divine health God's plan for you? The answer is yes, the Bible says so here. Now the word health here can be translated as to be sound, to be well, to be strong, to be healthy physically, to be wholesome physically. So it's not just talking about spiritual health, which is very important, but also physical health, your well-being in your physical body. That's why this is the truth, that it's God's will, it's God's plan for you to walk in divine and supernatural health. The enemy, the devil, of course, doesn't want you to know. And he will come up with all kinds of ways to downplay this truth. But you must know this truth, and this truth will set you free. Amen? So are you ready to walk in supernatural health? If yes, let's go together with me here. Number one, keep your connection with heaven. In other words, keep your connection with heaven open at all times. Be conscious of His presence in your life at all times. See yourself living under open heaven constantly. See yourself walking in the anointing and the power, the dunamis of God flowing in your life constantly, wherever you are, 24-7, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. No, this is not an imagination. This is real. In fact, more real than the physical world that you live in on this earth. So beloved, be open in your spirit, be open in your soul, and just receive right now the impartation from heaven for your supernatural health. When there is the presence of God, there is not just liberty, but also health, wholesomeness, wellness. Amen. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace. Interestingly, in the Hebrew Bible, perfect peace here, it's written as shalom, shalom. It means double shalom. So the words perfect peace here in the original language is shalom, shalom. I continue. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. It means for those whose mind is connected to him, stayed on him. And for those who trust in him, they will have this shalom, shalom. Now let me explain here. The word stayed here is samak in Hebrew. And it can mean rested on, leaned on, connected to. It means when your mind is rested on the Lord, when your mind is leaned on the Lord, and this is interesting, when your mind is connected to the Lord, when the inside of you is connected with the Lord, with the heavenly realm, where there is no sickness, that's when you will have perfect peace. Now the word peace here is shalom in Hebrew. Most of you would know this. But shalom here is more than just peace. It can mean any of these. Safety, wellness, wholeness, good health. You see good health here? 
being sound, favor, prosperity, welfare, peace, quietness, restfulness. So this word, as you can see, is wide in its meaning. Of course, don't get me wrong, all these points that I'm sharing with you today by no means downplay the role of doctors in our lives. There is a place, of course, for medicine, for medical doctors, and for medical consultation. After all, in the scripture, Luke himself was a physician. He's the one who wrote the gospel according to Luke, and of course, the book of Acts, a pivotal book in the whole New Testament. But what I'm saying here is, apart from all the physical, medical consultation and medicine, the Lord can give you supernatural health. The Lord can just release upon you an impartation from heaven. Are you ready? Why not just open your heart right now and receive right now? Oh yes, there's an open heaven right now for God's people. Yes, people of God just right now receive, 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 receive as much as you want to receive. Receive right now. There's a release of supernatural health. There's a release of healing. There's a release of divine health for God's people. In the name of Jesus, Amen. So as you keep your connection open with the Lord, as you are being conscious of His presence at all times, number two, know your freedom in Christ. Because in His presence, there is liberty, there's freedom. Freedom of what? Freedom to be who God wants you to be. Freedom to be yourself. In the plan of the Lord, of course. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is liberty. Now I'm not talking about political liberty per se here. You know what? Even in the most oppressive of countries on this earth, you can still walk in the liberty of the Spirit of God. You can still walk in the liberty in the Spirit. Now that's what happened those days, in fact, in the early days of Christianity. Christians were being persecuted everywhere, but yet, they were living in that liberty that is in the Spirit. So you see, nothing in the world can take away this liberty in Christ from us. And I'm talking about this kind of liberty, liberty in Christ, and not so much about civil liberty. I'm talking about liberty from the inside of you, that flows out from your relationship, from your deep relationship with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. And you know that in this time and season, I've been emphasizing so much on your relationship with the Holy Spirit, a deeper communion with the Holy Spirit, and that's the secret, that's the key for you to thrive and survive going forward in your life. Now, I would like to share with you, F-R-E-E, -E, free. What are the ways that you can walk in the freedom of the Lord? Liberty in your spirit, both supernaturally and naturally. So F can stand for focus. It means set your mind on God, and that's how you can be positive from the inside out. I know in the world there are people talking about positive thinking, but you see, it's not just from the outside, because if it's from the outside, it won't last. But if it's from the inside of you, from the inside out of you, from your spirit and soul, it will just flow outward. So you see, there's a place for positive thinking, but it has to be from the inside out. So focus on the Word of God. Focus on God. And of course, focus on all that God has spoken for you to be and to do in this world. So if F is focus, R is rest. Learn to rest in the Lord. Find rest in Him as you lay all your burdens and all your cares to Him. For He is the Lord who cares for you. Learn to exchange all your burdens, your concerns. Let Him carry them all. And in exchange, you receive His peace and His rest. Amen. So if F is focus, R is rest, E can be eat, and another E can be exercise. Let me explain. Eat of the spiritual food. In other words, meditate on the Word of God often. Of course, in the physical realm, you can choose to eat well physically as well. Eat well. Choose your physical food wisely. And of course, this one, I leave it to you. So eat can be spiritual food, can also be physical food. And another E is exercise. Exercise your spirit by praying in tongues. Best is you can pray in the spirit one hour a day. You know what? When I do that and practice that consistently, I realize that my immune system grows stronger. It is a proven fact. So pray in the spirit often. And of course, choose to exercise physically too. In fact, it will increase your sense of happiness as well. You will have a healthier mind. So F-R-E-E, -E, focus, rest eat, exercise, both spiritually and physically, both supernaturally and naturally. 
And this is what I want to introduce to you, which I practice. Number three, live a life of forgiveness. Now, this is just as important as the first two. Know that you are forgiven and know that you can forgive others. So it's not just you know that you are forgiven in Christ, but you also forgive others. Forgive yourself, forgive others who may have hurt you, whoever they may be. Ephesians 1 verse 7, you see, in Christ, we have redemption through His blood, the what? The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. So receive this grace, beloved of God. Receive the forgiveness of God. Receive the forgiveness of sins. Whatever that's past, past. You can walk in this forgiveness of the Lord. Yes, you can receive it right now. Like the waterfall that flows with the river of forgiveness. Amen. And Luke 23 verse 34, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. So not only you know that you are forgiven, why not be like Jesus as well in forgiving others? You see, Jesus gives us the perfect example of forgiveness. While in agony on the cross, Jesus called out and exclaimed to God the Father, and He said, Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. As Jesus is, so should we be. Amen. So one key to walk in supernatural health is know that you are forgiven and learn to forgive. Forgive yourself, forgive those who hurt you. Just receive that river of forgiveness right now. Just receive this river that flows in you and through you and out of you. And your life will be much more happier, healthier, light and easy. Amen. Number four, live a lifestyle of Jesus. Now I'm just saying what God's word say. You may or may not agree with me on this, but it doesn't matter. I'm just speaking from the scripture. Mark 1 verse 35. Now in the morning, Having risen a long while before daylight, Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. It means he was spending time with his Father, God the Father. Notice here, Jesus woke up early while he was on earth. You see, waking up earlier to have a head start for your life every day. I'm not sure about you, but as far as I'm concerned, that's the time the Lord speaks to me the most. And I will write it down. That's the time the Lord also would give me the direction in my life, what to do. And I spend time in worshipping the Lord. I spend time in reading the Word of God, praying in tongues. It gives me a head start for my day. So my suggestion is this. You can choose to wake up earlier to spend exclusive time with the Lord. There's no one, nothing between you and the Lord. And as I've said just now, this is just my suggestion. It's really up to you. But the truth is Jesus did that. He woke up early to spend time with his father. And I believe there's a reason why he set this example to all of us. Deuteronomy 5 verse 33, You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you. See the word well here? And that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Jesus was the prime example while on earth, in walking in alignment with his father. And that's why no one could kill him before his time. And no disease could touch him all throughout his time on earth. In other words, his lifestyle was healthy yet supernatural. It was only when the time came, he chose to let himself be arrested and be crucified on the cross to fulfill the prophecies in the scripture. But no one could kill him. No disease could touch him while he was on earth. And the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all are consistent regarding this. Now you may say, but Jesus is God. Yes, Jesus is God, but I want to tell you, Jesus is also man. He is God and man. He is 100% God, He is 100% man. And that's what I've been taught in my Bible school. And that's what I have been teaching, even in Bible school as well. Of course, He's not the only one who walked with God so closely. Enoch walked with God. Elijah walked with God. So learn to enjoy your walk with God. Wake up earlier in the morning, when everything is still quiet. Talk to the Lord. He is your best friend. Or any time of the day, you can have an exclusive time with the Lord. And of course, at all other times, while you are driving, while you are washing dishes, while you are doing household chores. Yes, even for students, when you enter the exam hall, involve Jesus. Let Jesus come in together with you. Talk to Him. Talk to the Holy Spirit. He is 24-7. Amen. So all in all, beloved of God, Enjoy your walk with God day by day. Enjoy your walk with God in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Enjoy your walk with God. It's supposed to be 
restful. It's supposed to be a very, very spontaneous time with the Lord where you can talk to Him, He talk to you, you can just release all your problems to Him and talk to Him about everything. If He is interested even in the number of your hairs, is there anything that He's not interested in in your life? And of course, number five, enter Daniel's fast. Now, I'm not just talking about physical fast here, even though that's what happened in the book of Daniel. And that's what Daniel chose to do. There is a place for that. Of course, there's a place to cleanse your body, physical body, once in a while. I read here, Daniel 1 verse 8, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel 1 verse 11 to 13. So Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So Daniel was telling the steward he'd rather eat vegetables and water instead of all those array of king's delicacies. But you see, there's a spiritual connotation here. It's not just physical food. In other words, I'm not saying that you have to be vegetarian. So it's not necessarily that you have to be vegetarian unless you choose to, of course, and there's nothing wrong to be one. But this word vegetables here have a spiritual meaning in the book of Daniel. Let's see what this word means in Hebrew. Now it's translated as pals in King James Version, but in Hebrew it's zeroah. Now the word zeroah here literally means something sown or seeds. You see the word seeds here? Let me cross-reference to what Jesus says in Matthew 13, verse 23. But he who received seed, see the word seed, on the good ground. And I tell you what, you be that good ground where the seed is planted. But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word, you see, hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Over here, Jesus explained that seed here speaks of the words of God. So, beloved of God, the seed, the words of God planted in your heart, planted in your life. Meditate on the word of God. You will never go wrong. Meditate on the word of God. If you have any question, any question about any Bible words, you can write to us. But the word of God shall never depart from you. You shall always set your eyes on the word of God. Eat of the Word of God, and of course, drink of the Holy Spirit. How? Pray in the Spirit. Word and Spirit. Spirit and Word. Amen. So how to walk in supernatural health? Let me summarize here. Number one, keep your connection with heaven open at all times. Be conscious of His presence 24-7. See yourself walking in the anointing, in the power of the Holy Spirit. See yourself walking in open heaven under open heaven, wherever the Holy Spirit leads you. Number two, know your freedom in Christ. No one can take away this freedom from you unless you allow them to, unless you allow it. Walk in this liberty in Christ. Walk in this freedom in Christ. Amen. Number three, live a life of forgiveness. Know that you are forgiven in Christ and know that you can forgive. Forgive yourself, forgive others. Number four, live a lifestyle of Jesus. Have an exclusive time with the Lord, solitary time with the Lord, walk with the Lord, knowing that He will never leave you nor forsake you. When you draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. And that's how He will always lead you. And you will always be led by the Holy Spirit to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right things, saying the right things, making right decisions. And these are keys for you to walk in supernatural health and supernatural provision as well. Number five, enter Daniel's fast. You see, worldly things can make us dry. There are times you know that you should just shut off from the world, shut off from the social media, and just spend time in the Word, spend time in the Spirit, soaking the Word, soaking the Holy Spirit, just worshipping the Lord, just meditating on His Word, praying in the Spirit, and that's how you receive true rest and refresh. And all this you can never find in the world. The world cannot offer you all this. All this money cannot buy. 
And you see, as a result, Daniel and his friends, they came forth much healthier, more radiant than others, who lived by the way of the worldly ways. And of course, beloved, to wrap it all up, partake the Lord's Supper, the bread and the cup. See Jesus' body being broken for you on the cross. See him carrying all your diseases, infirmities, and in exchange, we receive his divine health, goodness, wellness, wholeness. Amen. And see the blood of Jesus washing you clean. And see you receive the forgiveness of sins, the bread and the cup. Partake it often. Yes, even in your own time, with your family, you can do it anytime, anywhere. And that's what the early Christians did. You can see that in Acts 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. They were commemorating what Jesus had done on the cross. They were remembering what Jesus had done on the cross for them. His body was broken, his blood was shed for the remission of sins. And you know what? Those early Christians, they were walking in constant signs and wonders and miracles in their lives. And I'm not just talking about the apostles, I'm talking about the believers as a whole, in general. So you see, beloved, from all the scripture verses that I've shared with you today, you can walk in divine health. You can walk in supernatural health because the Bible says so. The scripture says so. Now, I want to pray for those of you who need healing or your family members or your friends need healing. Right now, just open your hearts if you need healing. Whatever kind of healing that you need, whether in your spirit, your soul, your physical body, from top to toe, any part of your body, internal, external, right now, in the name of Jesus, yes, nothing is impossible to God for those who believe. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that healing. Be healed and stay healed. Let the anointing from heaven be released upon your beloved, O Lord God. Be healed and stay healed in the name of Jesus. Just receive it right now. Just receive. Just receive this anointing. Just receive this healing. O Rabba Shuku Rabba Haba Ku Rabba Haba Shiki O Rahaba Ku Rahaba Shiki Halaba Ku Haba Karaba And O Lord God, we want to pray as your beloved, O Lord God, that in spite of these last days where there are pestilences, as is written in the Bible, we need not be afraid because we have you, we have your anointing, we have your presence. And today you have taught us to walk in supernatural health. We can receive your divine health, we can receive your divine healing. And as long as we walk with you, and we are aligned with you, with your word and with your spirit, you can cleanse us from every form of disease. You can cleanse us from every form of infirmities. And therefore, no bad virus, no disease can touch us. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. In the name of Jesus, Amen. So this is my message for you for this week. I just want to be faithful to the Lord because He's the one who has spoken for me to release this to you. Have a great time. Have an awesome day. God bless you.